Creating a spring cartoon version of yourself is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So as usual, we're going to start by just quickly setting up our file. Now for reference, the dimensions I will be using are just going to be 2500 pixels by 2500 pixels. So just a square that I could use to post on Instagram or Facebook. But make sure you find dimensions that work for your own project requirements. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw yourself as a character right here. But if you still want to use my illustration as a reference for proportions and everything and have it in the corner of your screen, all you have to do is go in the wrench icon menu selecting the canvas submenu and then activating the reference toggle which is going to let you import a picture. So you could then download my illustration as well as the color palette that we're going to use in this video. They will both be linked in the description below. That being said, this color palette is obviously for my character right here so it's probably going to be a different one for you but I'm going to show you how you can create your own and that's actually what we're going to start with. So go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to reference. And here, you're going to find a picture of yourself to import, but it doesn't need to be a picture of yourself, you know, laying on the grass with flowers. Just look for a picture that you know you're happy with the colors, so that we can use to create a basic color palette, and that you can use as a reference for your hair at least a little bit. Now, to import a picture in your Procreate file, all you have to do is go in the wrench icon menu, tapping on Add, and then selecting Insert a Photo. That's going to open up your gallery and then you can just click on the photo you want to use. I know mine is right here. And for now, we're going to just place the picture at the top of the screen so it's out of the way and we can sketch. So just go ahead and use the arrow tool, setting it to uniform to make your picture smaller and then put it at the top. Great, so at this stage, we're ready to start sketching. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide my example and then we're going to create a new layer. We're going to create it above the reference so that we can sketch and not have it hidden by the picture. So this new layer, we're going to rename it to sketch. Now here you can really sketch with any color of your choice because we're not going to see it in the final result. I like to just sketch with a neutral gray. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kind of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes to Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow along the video, no problems there. And the other brushes are going to be brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now, these brushes are definitely not essential, but they can help you save time and get more professional results because they have a lot of sensitivity and really cool textures within them. But again, they're not essential, you can follow along with free brushes, and you're still going to get really cool results. Especially for the sketch, again, we're not going to see it in the final result, so the brush doesn't matter at all. You could pick, for example, in the sketching panel that comes with Procreate, so a free brush, the HB Pencil. If you do have the illustration bundle, I recommend using the sketching brush, of course. And here we're going to draw a super rough sketch. We just want to roughly map out the different body parts and the proportions, so it doesn't need to look good in any single way. And we're going to start with the head, which is pretty much a circle in the middle of the screen. Then we're going to draw the body, which for now is just going to be half of an oval. Then we're going to add the arms, and you can see the arms that I drew here are just these kind of very thick banana shapes. They don't have really elbows or anything, so they're pretty easy to draw. All you do is zoom in so you have a better look on the body, and then draw, like I was saying, thick, I guess moon more than bananas. Yeah, so just kind of like that, and draw one on the other side as well. We're then going to sketch the hands, and the hands are just holding the bouquet, which would look like this, I guess. So we can just draw two very tiny ovals, um, stacked on top of each other and that's really going to be enough for this kind of illustration. So next we're going to focus on the head so you can just zoom in on the head instead and we're going to start with what I call the plus sign to help us see the direction of the head. So just a slightly curved vertical line and then a slightly curved horizontal line. You can then draw a circle for the ear and then refine the side of the head only if you want. I personally like to not have mine that much of an oval and instead more of a bean shape. But what I mean by that is that this area here where the horizontal line connect with the side is going to go in and then the bottom part of like the cheek and the chin is going to go out. So essentially it's just this kind of S-curve here. 
And next we're going to draw the facial features, but you might realize that by drawing the side of the face, so adding this bean shape instead of the oval, you might realize that your horizontal line is not exactly where you want it to be. So the horizontal line is what we're going to use to put the eyes, and I feel like mine was too high, so feel free to just go ahead and experiment with different heights for that line. Seriously, there's no right or wrong way to do it. In general, the lower it is, the younger or the cuter your character is going to look. So you can just play with that. And once you have a horizontal line that you think you like, go ahead and draw curved lines for the eyes. Just like that. And if you want more traditionally feminine looking character, you can add little eyelash details on the sides. And for the nose here, you can really experiment with different shapes to mimic your nose the best. So if you have a thin nose that kind of point forward, you could go and draw this kind of trumpet nose. If you want a really graphic, fun nose, you could draw more of a triangle that's kind of like Animal Crossing. I know I personally have a fairly, <laughs> fairly noticeable nose, let's say. So I, I like to just draw my nose as a curve, kind of like that. For the mouth, super simple as well. We're going to draw a tiny little smile like this. And honestly, that's pretty much it for the facial features. Uh, well, we still have the eyebrows and the eyebrows also super simple. I like to have mine quite high and slightly angled that way so my character looks really happy and peaceful. And I say that in pretty much every single video, but the beauty of working with basic shapes like this in a super rough sketch is that you can move around stuff as you go. For example, I'm not sure I like the angle of the head being like that. So if that's the case for you, or if you notice something else you want to change, you always have the option to use the selection tool here at the top, setting it to freehand and then drawing a selection around somebody part or some basic shape and then using the arrow tool whoops to either rotate it resize it or repositioning it so i'm just going to quickly rotate the head and put it where i want it to be yeah that's better great so now we have the basic structure what we have left to do for the sketch is the customizable element i guess so the flowers and the hair and here for the hair honestly i have a bunch of videos in which i go in detail about how to draw for example uh, short hair or curly hair so i will link those videos in the description below if you want to check them out but otherwise just look at your picture and find what kind of characterize your hair so for my hair the main thing is that it's very long <laughs> and it's also a little bit curly and wavy so just focus on that main aspect and don't really think about you know the physics of how hair falls and everything because our character is laying on the ground anyway so you can just kind of draw something that resembles hair and that is roughly the length and the shape of your hair and that's really enough for this video now just a quick tip on how I like to start drawing hair, at least sketching hair. I like to start, believe it or not, with just kind of the part, <laughs> which might sound strange, but just figuring out where my hair parts, which here I'm going to put it there, and then moving on to drawing roughly the hair lines, so how it falls on my forehead. So for that I like to start with, so just kind of adding a little shape in front of the ear like that, then something that connects with the part, very rough and quick as you can see. Then going on this side, maybe there's a little bit of a stray strand like this to make it extra cute. <laughs> and then once I have what falls on my forehead, I move on to what is on top of my head. So there's going to be some thickness with the hair, obviously, especially if you're laying down. So instead of just following the oval, we're going to add some thickness. And then you can just have the hair lay around you and kind of be super flowy and nice. So you really, really don't need to be precise at this stage. You just want to have a rough idea of where the hair is going to be. And once you're happy with your quick hair sketch, we're just going to quickly sketch the flowers so that we can then move on to adding the line art and the colors. So for the flowers, I like to just draw a bunch of lines first for the stems and then adding some nice big leaves that kind of flop over the hands, probably three just so that composition is nice. And then for now, you don't really have to map out the flowers. If you want, you could just skip ahead. Or if you do want to map out the flowers, it's going to be very quick. You can start with a circle and then petals around the circle. I usually like to draw either six or five petals, kind of what I think looks good. And you can also draw more kind of tulips. So tulips, super, super fun and easy. It's just going to be one big oval and then two smaller on the sides. That's not necessarily the best one, but <laughs> essentially that's the, that's the strategy. I 
So take all the time you need here to move around some stuff like we did for the head if you feel like something is out of place. And once you're happy with your rough sketch, we're going to move on to the details or line art. Awesome! So we did all the hard work, now we just have to trace this crazy sketch to create a nice line art. So for that we're going to go ahead and lower the opacity of our sketch layer so you can just barely see it. Now the exact opacity number is going to depend on the color you use. I'm going to leave mine a little bit more opaque just so you can still see it well in the video. Then you're going to create a new layer, make sure it's above the sketch, and rename this layer to Line Art. Now for the Line Art, for now we're going to draw it all in black, but later I'm going to show you how you can quickly recolor it. So for now just pick black. And in terms of brushes, there are a few options that you can use depending on if you want texture or not in your illustration. I really love texture, especially in kind of children's book illustration like this. So I would recommend you use in the sketching panel that comes with Procreate the 6B pencil. Or if you have the illustration bundle, you could pick the outlines brush. Now if you don't want texture, that's fine. You could pick in the inking panel that comes with Procreate, the Studio Pen, and you're going to have really nice clean lines. But again, I really recommend having a bit of texture. It's going to look super good at the end. Now the size of your brush here is going to depend on the size of your canvas and the brush you're using. So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Just try it. See, we you know what size you like. That's way too big, obviously, but just experiment. And once you find a size that you're happy with, just go with that. So again here it's all about just tracing over your lines to find which ones you're actually going to use because right now we have a bunch of them so that at the end of the step you have a nice clean line art. And there's really no right or wrong way to do the line art like I was saying but I do have one tip for you if you want to have a super nice fluid result. So try to not erase. So if there's a curve that you draw or if there's a line that you draw that you don't like instead of erasing a tiny section and trying to redraw that little section just undo the whole thing and then try it again. That way you're going to get lines that flow together and have really nice movement as opposed to lines that don't look quite right. Believe it or not, you're also going to save time overall. I know the first few times you try to not erase and undo instead, it's probably going to be harder and a little bit longer. But in general, when you get used to it, undoing and redrawing instead of erasing and re redrawing is much quicker. So it's really a win-win, although it might be a little bit harder the first few times. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the word spring. And if you're new on the channel, you might be a bit confused and wonder what is the secret password thing. It's a game that we play here on the channel. I hide secret words in my videos for you guys to find. And people seem to really like it. But the main thing about the secret password is that it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. So that's super, super important. So again, if you've watched this far, go ahead and leave a comment with the word spring and we're going to meet in the next step to start adding the colors. Great, so once you have your line art, we're going to go ahead and hide the sketch. We don't need it anymore, which should be really super encouraging. It looks so much better already. And then we're going to start adding the colors, which is going to be pretty simple because at this stage, it's a coloring book. So we're going to start with the background. Now the background, I want my character to be laying on the grass, so I'm just going to use a really nice green. If you're using the color palette, it's going to be this one right here, but otherwise you can see it's just a pretty neutral green in the sense that it's not super light, not super dark, not super saturated, not desaturated, pretty much in the middle, um, and quite yellow, more than blue. So once you have that, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, and we're going to put this layer below the line art. So just a new layer here, and we're going to rename this one to face. And we're going to use the reference picture that we have on the top of the canvas to help us pick the colors. Now you could be tempted to just go ahead, zoom in and color pick the color, but you can see that if you do that, the slight little move that you make is going to really change the color a lot. Now one tip that I have for you to avoid that is to go on the reference image, go in the adjustment panel, and picking Gaussian Blur. You can then blur your image so you're not going to see it nearly as well anymore. But by adding blur, you essentially are going to mix all the colors so that when you color pick it, it's going to give you an average of your skin or an average of your hair in that area. So it's going to be much easier to color pick the skin, the hair and everything. So go ahead and color pick your skin. And then we're going to activate on the line art layer what is called reference. 
So just tap on it and then tap on reference. So without going into all the details about reference, now if we go back on the face layer, Procreate is going to consider the lines that we have on the line art as kind of boundaries to fill in the colors. So that means we can, on the face layer, drag our colors onto the face and then adjust the threshold until it fills the area of the face. Now for that to work, you obviously need a fully closed line art, otherwise Procreate is not going to know, you know where the face ends. So if you're not able to just fill in the face and it bleeds into the hair or something like that, go back on your line art layer and just fill in any gap that you might have in your line art. Now in terms of adjusting the threshold, that's going to depend on the brush you use. So here I use a brush that has some texture in it, which means there are some tiny, tiny holes in the line art. So I'm going to have to tell Procreate not to consider those tiny holes. And the way to do it is to, yeah, just adjust the threshold, which you do by moving your finger towards the right or the left, right until you find the moment right before your color fills in more than the shape you want. So in my case, something a little bit like that. Now if you're quick, you can select continue filling with recolor at the top which is going to open up this tiny little kind of color selector. And that's going to allow you to fill in other sections with the same color. So to do it, you just move this little selector onto another shape. Like here, I want the hands to be the skin color as well. And then just tapping on the different sections that you want to fill in with the same color. And here you cannot adjust the threshold. It is adjusting the flood instead. So same thing as the threshold. You just want to adjust the FUD until your color fills in more than the shape you want, and then leave it there. And we're going to repeat this step with all the different base colors that we have and with different layers so that we can easily change them later. So for example here, I'm going to create a new layer for the hair. Now I'm going to put it below the face because the hair is below, you know, below the head. And I'm going to rename it to hair. And I'm going to go back on my reference picture here color pick the hair and then just dropping color on the hair section adjusting the threshold and then tapping to continue filling with recolor finding another section adjusting the flood as needed doing the eyebrows as well and you get the point so go ahead and repeat this step for all the different main colors you have and make sure you do it on separate layers. One exception to that though might be the flowers. You can create just one layer with all the flowers because otherwise it's going to be a lot of tiny layers with tiny details. Now for the flowers, if you want to use the same colors as I do, it's going to be pretty simple. So the leaves are actually going to be the same color as the background, so this green right here, but we still want to fill it in so we can have it on a separate layer. And then we're going to use a yellow for the middle of the flowers, which is going to be this one right here. We're also going to use kind of a creamy, almost white, but not quite, for some of the flowers. So you can see it's kind of the yellow, but just super, super bright. And finally, the tulips. I'm using this nice little pink right here. And you can always go back and manually adjust any section that was, for example, too small or not closed or something like that. So just go back on all the different color layers to make sure all your base colors are really nicely mapped out. And then we're going to move on to adding color variation like the cheeks and maybe something on the shirt as well. Great. So now that we have the base colors, it's going to be quite easy to just go back in and add some color variation to make it a little bit more interesting. I like to add really nice bright cheeks. So for that, we can just go ahead and create a new layer above the face and rename it to cheeks. Now we want the cheeks to stay within the face shape. So a quick thing you can do in Procreate to make sure that happens is tap on the cheek layer and then select clipping mask. Now everything we draw on this cheek layer is going to stay within the shape that we have for the face. So we can just quickly brush over the color without having to worry about staying within the lines. So just go ahead and select the skin color you have and then you're going to make it darker quite darker, more saturated, and maybe a little bit more red as well. For now, don't agonize over the color. I'm going to show you how to change it later, which is why we're drawing on a separate layer. If you're using the color palette, you can pick this pink right here. Now for these detailed color elements, if you're using the free brushes, you can stick with the 6B pencil, or you could go in the charcoal panel and pick the willow charcoal. Or if you're working with the illustration bundle, you could pick the basic texture brush. So these brushes are just a little bit bigger, which is going to help you quickly brush your color over. So you're just going to brush this color on the cheeks of your character. 
You can also bring it over the nose a little bit, maybe on the top of the ear, just to make your character feel a little bit more alive. So you can really quickly map it out and then refine it using the smudge tool and set it your smudge tool to the stucco brush from the painting panel. So you're probably going to use this brush on the smaller side and then just use it to kind of move your color around a little bit and just experiment with the placement of everything. Now, like I was saying, it's pretty easy to change the color or tweak the color of this cheek section. Since it's on a separate layer, you can go in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue, saturation, and brightness, so the first option, and then playing with the sliders here. So for example, I feel like mine might be a little bit too orangey. I'm just going to move the hue to make it a little bit more pink. You can play with the brightness to make it darker or lighter, the saturation to make it more colorful, I guess, more saturated or more gray. So really just playing with the sliders here until you find something that looks good to you. There's no right or wrong way. It's really just a question of feeling. And we're also going to use this technique to add color variation on the hair. So we're going to create a new layer, this time above the hair, renaming it to uh, hair variation something that you're going to remember and we're also going to apply it as a clipping mask so it stays within the hair so just a clipping mask like this now here i personally do that because i have fairly long hair and if it's just one color i find that it's boring you could skip this step if you want or you could go ahead and use it to add some crazy color i'm going to add a gradient so that my hair at the bottom is a little bit lighter and more um like amber colored almost or caramel so i'm going to color pick my hair color and then pick something that I like. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Again, you could go ahead and add a completely different color if you want, but I want this kind of nice orange color. And then with the same brush, so either the willow charcoal or the basic texture brush, probably making it bigger this time, you're going to brush on one part of your hair, either the top or the bottom, to add the color variation. And once more here, you can use your smudge tool to kind of smudge in the colors, probably making it bigger this time. And you can really repeat this step as many times as you want to add as many color variation or details as you want. For example, you could repeat it on the shirt to add a gradient in the shirt. You could also repeat it not with gradients, but with kind of details. So you would just, for example, create on the shirt a new layer, also a clipping mask, but then going in with white to add some stripes. So once more, take all the time you need here to add all the color variation and details you want. And once you have that done, we're going to meet up for the next step, which is going to be recoloring the outlines. Now this step is totally optional, but once you do have all your details and color variation, you could go ahead and change the color of the line art so it's not just one color, but it's kind of adapting to whatever color it is surrounding. So if you want black outlines everywhere, you can skip to the next chapter, so the shading chapter. Otherwise, you can go ahead and first deactivate the reference on the line art. And then activating alpha lock. So you can do that in two ways, either picking two fingers and then swiping the layer towards the right, or just tapping on the line art and activating alpha lock manually. Now what alpha lock does is everything we draw on this line art layer is going to stay within the lines that were already there. So we can just quickly brush over the line art to recolor them. Now I like to have darker versions of the different colors in my illustration. So for example, for the hair, you could color pick the hair, make it quite a bit darker. And then with the same brush you use in the previous step to add the color variation, just brushing over your outlines. Now the brown might not be the best example to give you because it's quite similar to the black, but let's go with blue. Um, you would just color pick your shirt color, make it darker, and then brush over to quickly recolor your outlines. Now again, this step is definitely not essential, but it can help make your piece feel more professional and more polished, so feel free to do it if you want. No matter what, we're all going to meet in the next step for the shading, so either pause your video or just skip ahead if you want black outlines. For the shading, we're going to go with something quite simple, so don't worry about it, it's nothing to be afraid of, but it's going to really make this piece pop because right now it's quite flat and fairly boring, let's be honest. <laughs> the first thing we need to do though is make sure that the reference option is deactivated on the line art layer. So if you didn't recolor your line art, all you have to do to deactivate the reference is just again, tap on the line art layer and then deactivate reference. 
Once that is done, we're going to create a new layer below the line art and we're going to rename it to Shadows. We're also going to apply this shadow layer as a special blending mode. So just tapping on the N, we're going to pick Linear Burn and we're going to lower the opacity for now around 50%. I'm not going to go in all the details about blending modes. I have a full video about that in which I show you all the blending modes and what they do and blah, blah, blah. But for now, just keep in mind that whatever we paint on the shadow layer is now going to adapt to the colors below it, which means we can just paint all the shadows with one color and that color is going to change and adapt with the brown, the blue, the color of the skin and stuff like that. So it's going to help us save a lot of time because we don't have to you know, manually change the shadow color all the time. Now the color I personally like to use for my shadow is a grayish purple. You could really experiment with a bunch of different colors. The only thing I would recommend is not using anything that is neutral. So no neutral gray, no black, because that's going to make your shadows look a little bit muddy and that's not the best. So something with a little bit of color in it, whatever the color is, is going to look great. And here we're going to stick with the same brush. So either the 6B pencil, the willow charcoal, if you're using the pre brushes, or if you're using the illustration bundle, picking the base texture brush. And we're going to start by adding shadows on the body. So super simple, just zooming in. And we're going to add shadows below the arms to help separate them from the body itself because right now they're kind of all blended. So really just a line that follows the arms like that. We're also going to add a bit of a shadow on the side of the body, kind of like that. Nothing super precise. Then we're going to add a shadow on the side of the arms like this. Maybe some below the flowers. So you can see it's really not about a specific kind of physics of shadows and light or whatever. We just want to separate the different body parts and the different um, elements in the illustration. So it pops a little bit more and there's more dimension to it. But without going into all the details about shading and everything, we don't need that here. It's really not... It's really not the point. You can also add a shadow below the face once more just to separate it from the body. And if you have a lot of hair like me, you might want to add a section of the hair that is kind of further away. So in the back, I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but just picking a chunk of hair that is close to the body and making that entire chunk darker. You can also add some shadows around the face so that it separates well from the hair. And if you have a little stray strand like this, you can add a shadow below it as well. Like that. And you can add some extra shadows within the hair itself just to make it look like there's more movement and it's not just one flat little thing. So really just following the general flow and shape of the hair, adding some extra lines in there. So once you have that, you might notice that your shadows are either too intense or not intense enough. So to fix that, you can just go back in your layer panel and then change the opacity of your layer. I find that mine are a bit too much, especially, you know, this hair section. So I'm going to lower the opacity. Now at this stage, we can also add a shadow below the characters on the ground. So for that, just creating a new layer, making sure that it's below everything. So in my case, below the shirt and rename this one to ground shadow. We're going to use the same blending mode with roughly the same opacity, so linear burn, in my case I think it was 38 that I ended up with, it doesn't need to be exact, but in the same range. And with the same brush and same color, you're just going to add a shadow on the ground to help separate your character from the ground. So this is a bit better, but it's still a little bit flat. We're going to add some highlights and that should really help make the piece pop. So for the highlights, just create a new layer and create it above the main shadows, above everything, but below the line art and rename it to lights. For the lights, we're going to use the blending mode add. So it's similar to linear burn, but it's going to make the colors lighter instead of darker. But add is very, very strong. So I recommend starting pretty low, probably around 20% or something like that. Now here, since our character is outside, for the lights, we're going to use a really nice bright yellow color. 
kind of like that so super super bright quite saturated and you can stick with the same brush but just making it smaller because the technique i like to use for my lights is what i call outlining my outlines so it's really nothing complicated you don't have to worry about the volume or anything it's not about 3d it's just about making the piece pop so basically what i do is i find one side for my light source here in my case, since most of my shadows on the ground are on this side, my light source would be here. It might be different for you, and honestly, it doesn't really matter much. But what I'm going to do is outline all the outlines that I have that are facing that direction with light. So for example, here the face. And you can see already that the piece pops so much more because it helps adding contrast between different elements and also just make it look like there's light hitting the face. So you can do that on all the different body parts. And you can also add some extra shine on some parts, so for example, I like to add little dots on the cheeks just to refine the face a little bit more, maybe some on the, the nose, maybe a little bit of a shine on the ear as well. But otherwise, yeah, just focusing on outlining your outlines. And just like for the shadows, you can add some lights in the hair as well, so just extra little lines to give it a bit more volume. So once more, I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on adding your highlights. Take all the time you need, feel free to pause the video, and we're going to meet up for the next step, which is going to be finalizing the piece with the background. Great! So at this stage, we can go ahead and hide the reference picture. We obviously don't need it anymore. And we might also want to group all the different layers just to organize the file. So for that, you can just swipe your layers towards the right with one finger until you select them all, including the line art, and then grouping that. You can then collapse it and rename that to, oops, character. Now, obviously the background, you can do whatever you want with it. I'm just going to give you some tips on how you can just add a few elements to make it a little bit more interesting than it is right now. The first one being just adding some tiny little dots. So just creating a new layer, putting it below the character group and renaming it to dots. So for the dots, you're just going to color pick the color you have for your grass and make it quite a bit lighter, maybe a little bit more yellow as well. You can then go ahead and, as you can imagine, just draw some dots. I like to draw mine in groups of one, two or three. I know one is not a group, but you get the idea. With slightly varying sizes. And sprinkle those on the background. And already you can see it's super quick, but it does make a big difference in making it feel less boring. Another thing you can do is add extra flowers and extra leaves. Now those you might want to add them on your character as well, especially the hair so that your character blends and integrate with the background better. Better? <laughs> better. So just creating a new layer, this time above the character group and renaming it to uh, extras, I guess. And for that, you can really use any color of your choice. I'm going to start by adding some extra flowers like these right now. So I'm going to just color pick that. And then going back to a more precise brush, so either in the sketching panel, the 6P pencil, or if you're working with the illustration bundle, the outline brush. And for those elements, I'm not actually going to outline them because I don't want them to be the main focus. I just want them to add a bit more interest to the background without taking away from the main character. It's more about just quickly drawing them on top of the character and around the character. So just a few petals here, maybe one right there. Then picking the center, well, the yellow for the center, and just drawing that real quick. Maybe adding some extra leaves as well. So for that, you can actually color pick the shadow part of your grass and then make it even darker. And yeah, just same thing at the flower, adding some leaves here and there. And last but not least, you could go ahead and write something above your character. I wrote Hello Spring, but obviously you can write whatever you want. So just creating a new layer above everything, renaming it to text, and then picking pure white and sticking with either the 6B pencil or the outline brush, writing whatever you want. Now I'm by no means the best at calligraphy, so I'm just gonna, you know, use my handwriting and call it a day. 
<laughs> and it's all over the place. Seriously, calligraphy or writing stuff is definitely not my best. If it's the case for you, you can always use the arrow tool since it's on a separate layer to just reposition, resize, rotate your text as needed and put it where it should actually be. You can also do that on individual letters. Like, I don't know, my R here is a bit weird. So just selecting that right here and then moving it around. Now I have space for my exclamation mark. And there we go. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn to create more cartoon illustrations like this, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.